So the code here should look familiar where we have the homework regarding closures. Matter of fact, before you even watch this video, I'd like you to pause this video and just walk through this code and talk to yourself about this code or make some notes right now about this code because it should be quite readable. So go ahead, pause the video. And now let's go through an official explanation. So here we've declared a function. This is a function declaration with the keyword function. We've created a function with the name that starts with a verb indicating that it is some sort of action or a function. This function specifies one parameter called increment. This function returns out another function. Anytime we see this pattern, there's a high likelihood that we are working with a closure. So what exactly is being enclosed here? Well, the answer is whatever we pass in for increment, instead of just being thrown to the garbage after this function runs, it sticks around. Whatever gets passed in for the increment is going to be enclosed inside of this return function. And here, just for a little bit of variety, we are writing this with a one-line arrow syntax. So here, this is a parameter called score, and we're specifying the arrow like this. And since it's only one line of code, or one statement rather, there is an implicit return. It's going to perform this action and return it. So what is this actually doing? Well, when we, whenever we call this function, we say create score incrementer, and in this case, we pass in the number one. That one is going to be bound to the parameter increment, and that one, again, instead of being thrown to the garbage after the function is finished running, that one is going to be enclosed inside of the return function, hence the name closure. So here are the three functions that I've created. So these functions in turn will be able to call later on and they'll automatically increment by one, two, or three. So right below here, th well, to be clear, this, this is a functional approach. And here we're doing this more procedurally. So here to drive home the point, we're using a closure, which is a functional approach. We learned about JavaScript in a multi-paradigm language. So here we're doing it more functionally, and here we're doing it more procedurally or imperative style, where we are very specifically manually telling JavaScript what we want done. So we could do it like this, where we just create our functions one at a time manually, if you will, or we can use our function factory here. The name function factory indicates that it's doing what? Creating reusable functions that we can just call on the fly like we see down here. This essentially illustrates the closure. So the function that looks like this is essentially what is being returned here at increment one. So I've tried to show this both ways. Here we're creating the closure, which ends up generating this function, or we can spell this function out name. Let's get rid of these. And so moving forward, we can start with a score of zero, and then we can so we're gonna use let and let will allow us to reassign the data that's bound to score. So here we're gonna call increment one and we're gonna pass in our score, which is currently zero. So zero will come in here to increment one. We saw earlier what that function looks like. So we should not be too surprised that the score is gonna throw away the zero and it's gonna get rebound to the number one, and we'll see that output here. Same thing happens with two and then three. We'll run the code just to make sure. Prizes, like we already walked through the code, we're using a closure, we're using a function factory, we specified a parameter, we pass in arguments, we call that function, and we are reassigning with the keyword let. 
So right in this example, we've touched upon several... ...and some terminology. So if you were to discuss something like this in an interview, you can be mindful of using the correct terminology.